Lavinia Sprills, can I help you? Could I speak to Mr. Roberto Gatti? Speaking. Hi, this is Sarah, Miss Fraser's colleague. How can I help you? I would like to place an order. Sure. The order is for stockings and silk tops. Hmm, I see. Is there something wrong? No, I expected to deal with Miss Fraser in person. It was Miss Fraser who, in person, asked me to call you. No problem, then. Anyway, I'll ask Miss Fraser to send you an email to confirm the order. That's not necessary. I would like to order 90 pairs of stockings and 50 silk tops, with a 5% discount as previously agreed. Yes. Could you please quote the item number from the catalogue? Yes. Hollywood Stockings number 900H15 and Bunny Girl Silk Tops 701BG344. When do you need these items? We need the goods urgently. Can you dispatch them as soon as possible? No problem. The goods can be delivered by the end of next week. What about the method of payment? We'll pay by bank transfer. Fine. Do you have all the necessary information? Yes, thank you. That's all. Goodbye. If you let me know your size, I would like to send you one of our two-piece lace sets as my personal gift to you. Ah, oh, well, I'm a size 14. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Hi, are you okay? I'm sure you are. To our training session then. Today, we're going to learn how to place an order, to say catalog numbers, to ask about delivery times, to talk about payment methods. As you have seen, Sarah, Lucy's colleague, is calling Roberto, the manager of a company that supplies lingerie. She is calling on behalf of Lucy and wants to place an order. She says, I would like to place an order. And then she specifies, I would like to order, remember, 90 pairs of stockings and 50 silk tops. She also reminds Roberto to give them a 5% discount, as previously agreed. That means as accepted earlier. When you place an order, you must supply the item number. Roberto asks, could you please quote the item's number from the catalog? And Sarah answers, Hollywood Stockings Number 900H15 and Bunny Girl Silk Tops Number 701BG344. When you are on the phone, it is important to read the numbers and letters slowly and clearly. It is also important to decide when the items will be delivered or dispatched, that is, sent to your home or company. Roberto asks, when do you need these items? And Sarah answers, we need the goods urgently. Can you dispatch them as soon as possible? Roberto answers, the goods can be delivered by the end of next week. However, as sometimes there may be a problem, you can say, I am sorry, but there is a two-week delivery time, or I am afraid there is a problem. We cannot dispatch the goods before. Finally, they discuss a money matter. 
That is the method of payment. Roberto asks Sarah, what about the method of payment? Sarah says, we'll pay by bank transfer. There are many payment methods. These include bank transfer or wire transfer, a method of transferring money from one bank account to another. On account, when the items will be paid for later. COD, cash on delivery, when it is agreed that the goods are paid for on arrival. I am sorry, but that's the end of today's lesson. Bye, and see you soon for another workout. What time is it? Two o'clock. Miranda said that I have to practice my talk. How embarrassing. There must be a list of recommendations here. Ah, here they are. Good. Let's try them. One, introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Linda Hardy, and I'm the personal assistant to Miranda Cunningham. Not bad. Two, specify the content. This morning, I'd like to talk to you about our legal firm. What comes next? Define your objective. My objective is to demonstrate our firm's progress. Now, introduce the structure of your presentation. My talk will be divided into two parts. Part one will deal with the activities carried out in our firm, and part two with how we deal with our clients. By the way, I also have to deal with the financial aspects of our firm. All right, moving on to the financial aspects. Now, how am I supposed to conclude? Hmm. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I survived this experience. Oh no, I forgot the question and answer session. If you have any questions to ask, please don't hesitate to do so. I have some questions. Why do I have to do this? Why can't Miranda handle this? Why can't I just do my job? Hi everybody. Ready for another business workout? Have you ever given a presentation? If not, no problem, as today we are going to talk about it. Today we are going to learn how to introduce yourself, to introduce the objective, the content, and the structure of your presentation, to introduce a new subject, to conclude, and to introduce the question and answer session. As you have seen, Linda has to give a presentation. A presentation is a talk giving information about something. Luckily, Miranda has left a list of recommendations. There are indeed some basic rules to follow if you want to give a successful presentation. First, you must introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Linda Hardy, and I am the personal assistant to Miranda Cunningham. She could also say, hello, I am Linda Hardy, and I am here on behalf of Miranda Cunningham. Then you have to introduce the subject of your presentation. This morning, I'd like to talk to you about and your main objective. My objective is... After that, you will introduce the structure of your presentation. Linda says, my talk will be divided into, remember, two parts. Part one will deal with the activities carried out in our firm, and part two with how we deal with our clients. Or she could say, first of all, I am going to look at something and then at something else. During your presentation, you may have to move to another subject. How do you do that? Moving on to 
the financial aspects or moving on to the advertising campaign, etc. You can also say, next I'll deal with the advertising campaign. When you give a presentation, it's important to conclude it appropriately. Linda says, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. You can also say, this concludes my talk. Thank you very much. Every talk or presentation ends with a question and answer session. If you have any questions to ask, please don't hesitate to do so. Sometimes you can limit the time and say, we only have time for three or four questions. Or, because time is short, we shall be taking questions only on a specific subject. Because time is short, I have to say goodbye. See you next time. Ow! Ow, be careful! I am careful. Elizabeth, you are my only customer who complains during a hand treatment. I am the only customer with delicate, sensitive skin. Ow! Indeed, you have beautiful skin. So I am told. Okay, now we have to leave your left hand in warm water for a while. Would you like a magazine to look at? Sure, thank you. Hmm, that's interesting. What? There's an article on diets. The perfect diet. Weight loss guaranteed. What does it say? The cabbage soup diet. The cabbage soup diet? Yes. Eat cabbage soup and you can lose three kilos in only a week. And if you avoid all fats and sugars, you can lose up to six kilos in the second week. <laughs> I don't think diets work. Why is that? Well, I have breakfast, lunch and dinner every day and I eat almost as much as I want and I don't gain weight. You are indeed quite thin. How is that possible? First, I eat a balanced diet. I go to the disco every Saturday. I do the housework twice a week. Finally, instead of taking the tube, I walk home from work every day. Well, I don't know if that works for everybody. Diets are just a fad, a fashion. But after all, as I said, I am certainly not overweight. Overweight? Neither am I. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Today we're going to talk about diets. Interesting subject, right? I am afraid there are a lot of people who have weight problems. Today we're going to learn terms and verbs related to weight and diets. Mrs. Knight is having a hand treatment and behaves as if Chloe were torturing her. Mrs. Knight is not an easy client. While waiting, Mrs. Knight reads a magazine and finds an interesting article. Can you remember the title? The Perfect Diet. Weight Loss Guaranteed. Very appealing. You go on a diet when you eat less food or only particular types of food for medical reasons or because you want to become thinner. With the cabbage soup diet, you can lose three kilos in only a week. You can lose or gain weight. What does Chloe think? Right, she doesn't believe in diets. She says, I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, and I eat almost as much as I want, and I don't gain weight. Lucky girl. As Mrs. Knight notices, she is quite thin. You can be thin, skinny, or heavy, fat. As Mrs. Knight is very surprised, Chloe says, I eat a balanced diet. A balanced diet is a diet that contains adequate amounts of all the necessary nutrients required for healthy growth and activity. Then Chloe 
does a lot of physical activity. What does she do every Saturday? Right, she goes to the disco. She also does the housework twice a week and walks home from work instead of taking the tube. Chloe says that diets are just a fashion. But after all, it's not her problem because she's not overweight. Overweight means fat. The opposite is underweight. Obviously, it's advisable to be of average weight. Time to go. I think I'll have a piece of cake. Whoops. What did I say? I'm going to eat an apple. Okay? Bye. My dear Felicity, I am so glad you followed my advice. Are you talking about my holiday in Brazil? Sure. What else? Yes. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Unforgettable, yes. You don't seem very happy. Is there something the matter? Well, I can't say what I saw made me happy. What do you mean? In Brazil, there are lots of environmental problems. Pollution is just one of them. Uh-huh. In Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, you can hardly breathe with all the smog. Maybe you are exaggerating. Did you visit other parts of the country? Right. I forgot to mention the deforestation of the Amazonian rainforests. Um. Our tour guide told us that there are many endangered species due to the greenhouse effect. Felicity, you are right. But you must not forget all the efforts taken to save our planet. Seems to me there's not much to save. You can't say that. We are doing a lot to protect endangered species, make use of renewable forms of energy, tackle climate change. It's all right for you if you believe in all of this. Felicity, I am so sorry. So am I. No, I am sorry because next time I will suggest something less expensive. What about a walk in the city center? With all those exhaust fumes. <gasps> Hi, I hope you've done a few warm-up exercises because today we have quite a lot to cover. In fact, we are going to talk about the problems of our planet. We will learn about some of today's environmental problems and what can be done about them. As you have seen, Felicity has followed Dr. Fraser's advice and has gone on holiday to Brazil, right? Is she happy? Hmm. Not very. She says that Brazil has a lot of environmental problems. Environment refers to our habitat and our general living conditions. One of the most relevant environmental problems is pollution, which is the deterioration of water, air, etc., owing to harmful substances. There are many kinds of pollution, such as water, air, noise pollution. Air pollution is also called smog. You find smog mostly in cities and it's caused by a mixture of smoke, gases and chemicals. Dr. Frazier tries to change the subject of their conversation and asks Felicity if she has visited other areas of the country. Do you remember what she talks about? Right the deforestation of the Amazonian rainforests. A rainforest is a forest in a tropical area which is subject to continual rain. Besides deforestation, there is the problem of endangered species. Endangered birds, plants, species refer to animals or plants which risk extinction due to the fact that there are very few surviving species. One of the main causes of this is the greenhouse effect, which refers to an increase in our planet's temperature. Dr. Frazier tries to emphasize the positive side of these topics. You must not forget all the efforts done to save our planet, including the fact that we protect endangered species, make use of renewable types of energy, and tackle climate change. To tackle, 
means to make determined efforts to deal with a difficult challenge. Unfortunately, Felicity is inconsolable. Even when Ray suggests a walk in the city center, she is worried about exhaust fumes, that is gas ejected from vehicles such as cars or buses. Well, I will go for a walk in the city center anyway. See you in the next training session. Keep practicing. Bye. Good morning. How can I help you? I'd like to check out. I see. May I have your name and room number, please? Emma Wallace, room 23. Oh, sure. Emma Wallace. The famous Emma Wallace. Yes, Emma from City Live FM. Let me just pull up your record. Sure. Do you know what the forecast is for today? It's supposed to rain later. Hmm, I see. Ah, here is your bill. Hmm, is everything clear on your bill? What is this minibar charge for 32 pounds? I'm sure it's correct. I'll check it immediately. A strawberry crunch? Four chocolate bars? Rather expensive, don't you think? I'm sorry. Emma, I'm one of your fans. I always listen to your program. You do? I'm sorry you're leaving. Well, I have to go. My fans are waiting for me. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Yes, the room service was a little slow last night, but breakfast was excellent. Good. If you're going to the airport, you can take our complimentary shuttle. It runs every 30 minutes. That sounds handy. I have a flight at 12.30. It will pick you up in a few minutes. Can I have your autograph? Sure. Hi, nice to see you again. Most unfortunately, every holiday has a beginning and an ending. Today, we're going to focus on what you say when you leave a hotel. We will learn about checkout procedures asking about prices, and offering services. As you have seen, Emma is leaving the hotel and checks out with Miss Adams. Have you noticed how Miss Adams carries out the conversation? I think she is friendly and good at creating a positive atmosphere. First thing, she offers help. Good morning. How can I help you? Emma answers, I'd like to check out. You check out when you leave a hotel and check in when you arrive. Miss Adams asks, may I have your name and room number, please? And when given the necessary information, she pulls up her records. Records are stored information. Miss Adams hands Emma a, remember, bill. That's right. This is a request for payment of money owed. She asks, is everything clear on your bill? What seems to be the problem? Emma asks, what's this mini bar charge for 32 pound? Again, Miss Adams proves to be clever not only at handling a conversation, but in dealing with problems as well. Instead of discussing the bill, she diverts Emma's attention, saying that she's one of her fans and always listens to her program. After that, she checks if Emma is satisfied. I hope you enjoyed your stay. You can also say, was everything satisfactory? Or, did you enjoy your stay? Finally, Miss Adams says, if you are going to the airport, 
you can take our complimentary shuttle. It runs every 30 minutes. Do you know what a complimentary shuttle is? It's a vehicle, free for guests, that takes them to the airport and vice versa. The hotel shuttle runs, that means leaves, every 30 minutes. Well, I'm afraid I have to run too. Our lesson is over. See you in our next training session. Bye. This coffee is excellent. Thank you. And this place is really nice. Let me congratulate you. Thank you. Not as good looking as you, if I may say so. Uh-huh. Thousands of tourists have chosen Jamaica as their travel destination. Jamaica? Not my favorite destination. Really? Strange. I was there last month to take these pictures. Jamaica has much to offer. An idyllic tropical maritime climate. Mmm, interesting. Lush vegetation. A rich cultural heritage. Interesting. Much of the land is mountainous and the coastline is irregular, particularly in the south, see? Though over 60% of the population is of African descent, there are people of European, Arab, and Chinese origin as well. I see. Jamaica was once a Spanish colony, and about 400 years ago, it came under British rule until 1962 when it became an independent nation. Ah. The major industries are tourism and agriculture. Jamaica also has natural resources, primarily bauxite. <laughs> I did not know that. Do you like reggae? I love it. Well, Jamaica is the birthplace of Bob Marley. Of course. Do you know if flights to Jamaica are expensive? <laughs> Welcome back. I am glad to announce a really pleasant workout today. We are in fact going to talk about one of the most beautiful places in the world, Jamaica. Today we are going to learn how to describe a country in relation to its history, landscape, industry, and population. As you have seen, Archie is a photographer and has just returned from Jamaica, where he has taken some photos for a travel magazine. At first, Emily is not particularly interested, but then she changes her mind. Not hard to imagine, don't you agree? Archie says that Jamaica has an idyllic tropical maritime climate. Climate refers to the general weather conditions. A climate can be hot, dry, harsh. The country has lush vegetation and a rich cultural heritage. Vegetation means the plant life in general and heritage refers to valued things belonging to the culture of a particular society, such as its traditions, language, or buildings. For example, these ancient monuments are part of our cultural heritage. Archie says that much of the land is, do you remember? Mountainous, good. You can say much of the land is deserted, or flat, etc., and the coastline is irregular. The coastline is the shape of a coast. Sixty percent of the population is of African descent, which means that the majority of the population has African origins. Jamaica was once a Spanish colony. Do you remember what happened about 400 years ago? It came under British rule. The major industries are tourism and agriculture. There are many kinds of industry, tourism, manufacturing, building industry, etc. But Jamaica has some natural resources as well. Natural resources are those supplied by nature, such as bauxite, sure, but also minerals, fossil fuels, 
timber, and so on. Do you remember what Emily finds most appealing about Jamaica? Right, the music, reggae. Maybe I will book a flight to Jamaica one of these days. In the meantime, let me say goodbye.